Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, just confirming uh, that you have joined the platform stream and welcome to day two of API Days. Uh, so my name is Rebecca McDonald and I will be your MC for this session. I am the People Operations Manager for CBO at Deloitte, working with the business, platform and cloud engineering teams. Uh, so my work is uh, more focused on looking at how organisations engage with uh, um, our prospective talent in the market, uh, what our candidate experience look lo looks like during recruitment, and then enhancing employee um, engagement uh, through the, into the future. Uh, so this morning, our platform stream is looking fantastic. Uh, I do want to start by just encouraging you to use the, the Q&A section in the chat, and uh, I'll endeavour to make sure that we cover off all of your questions uh, during the presentation. Uh, so this morning, I'd like to introduce Rafael Marins. Rafael joins us from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Uh, he is the Principal Product Marketing Manager at Red Hat. Uh, on the job, he connects multiple teams within Red Hat to support engagements in open APIs for financial services with strategic customers. Um, and in the industry community, he leads the Event Driven Architecture Working Group at the Banking Industry Association Network. Uh, he's also a father of three and an avid supporter of the Flamengo soccer team. I believe, uh, Raphael, they're actually playing tonight. So best of luck. <laughs> so, <laughs> <That's correct. laughs> and this morning, Raphael's talking to us about a cloud native approach for open banking in action. Thanks, Raphael. Yeah. Thank you. And hello, everyone. And thank you, thank you for, for taking, taking the time today and, and a work warm welcome to to api day so right now we have a time difference of 13 hours from from for from sydney and melbourne since i'm i'm talking from speaking from rio and as as you can see and because i want to discuss the operational perspective through how this presentation i'm referring to open apis as abstraction to the open banking term or concept, which in some parts uh, of the world is it is very specific meaning of regulatory requirements. That is the reason. So here is the agenda. And first we'll see that what are the drivers and the industry challenges that just to set this scene and it will be very quickly. And thus we'll go over the technical conversations and architectural approach in that problem space. So to start, uh, the shift to the digital business is happening now, and banks are facing a new reality, uh, need to embrace digital ecosystems and deliver services to meet customer needs. And to build a competitive advantage requires connecting to multiple marketplaces and new ecosystems across industries to serve at the customer experience, right? So what are the key words relative to these trends are choice, control, and customer centricity or customer centric. And at very and in its very central role, there are four potential aspects or dimensions that the financial in the financial value chain that banks can can take take this place. So the line of business decision makers of incumbent institutions are using APIs to pivot their business. At the moment, they face two fundamental strategic questions. So one is, who is distributing my products and which, may, which I make accessible via APIs to existing and new customers? And the second is, who is creating the products that I will be distributing to my own customer base? So embracing a new role in the financial value chain entails transformational challenges as it requires a change in the business and operational model. This is a crossroad that every bank is possibly facing now. And most of the largest in financial institutions uh, are red play roles of the integrator, the producer and distributor at the same time. So in the integrator role, they are offering 
uh, to the customer is, is, is exclusively created and distributed by a single party. So they are vertically integrated. And the distribution and the products are provided under the brand, under their own brand. And that customer experience is fully controlled by the bank. Same time, the producer role, the offering to the customer is created by a minimum of two parties. So the bank creates the services while the external party distributes the services to the customers who is often also a customer of the bank. And the third role, this distributor, uh, they are starting to add open API access to their services. Banks could consider extending their digital market presence by distributing third-party services and thereby adopting the role of this, uh, uh, this role of distributor. In this role, a bank offers third-party products through its own distribution channels. And ultimately, uh, they could act as a facilitator for third-party pro third parties and, and their customers. As, as a platform, banks could unbundle themselves to offer valuable services, matching the parties, know your customers, and that is the platform role that banks are starting to play. And before talking about the technology, it's important to recognize what is behind this, right? So what are the strengths of the financial services market that requires a new type of approach to IT? And with customer expectations at all time high and fintech firms waiting in the wings to stake their claim on the market share, it's imperative for the banks to rededicate themselves to understanding their customers on an intuitive level and at delighting them at a very opportunity. Although technology can help to achieve these goals without a solid customer centric strategy to act on, it's little more than expensive window dressing. So they have the, the needs around personalized products in terms of digitization of their financial services uh, offerings. And they should focus on turning the customer journey into something personal, rather than utilitarian. And financial services should work seamless as part of the life cycle of a transaction. So it should be an end-to-end -end journey from transacting on mobile devices, understanding your financial status through self-service uh, analytical tools uh, to interact with financial consultants. Uh, but also data-driven. So over the years, financial services organizations have accumulated mass quantities of data, and it's time to tap on big data, analytics, cloud, and AI to turn this data into insights and knowledge. It will allow to improve on the existing services, create innovative experiences, and ultimately develop new business model. And finally, omni-channel, banks are always functioning with an organizational trinity of front offices, uh, middle offices, and back offices. So in the next 10 years, this trinity will evolve dramatically. As we are already noted, back offices will slim down, call centers will but disappear to, due to AI bots and automation and brains will be scaled down in numbers and transforming in functions. So this is just give, give the, the scenario, the whole picture. And this is uh, what, what open APIs are actually making possible today to provide new services to retail and consumer banking, but also corporate banking for better integration between the banking services and the, the, the final, the end customers. And then uh, the, what is the impact for the open APIs is about becoming more agile to embrace the change happening in the market, in the meaning of the innovation, but also in terms of competitivity, fast, becoming fast and cheaper in terms of bringing new services 
or delivering new ser services to, to the market, to the customers. And you can literally be also creating new relationships with partners and, and, and develop new channels. So the cloud native approach. So opening up your bank to expose the APIs in the cloud has its challenges. However, distributed systems are not new. So basically for row 50 years, we wrote applications in some variant of a monolith architecture, whether it is it was client server, mainframe, three-tier, pipeline processing, or something else. We had services that did different jobs, but were similar to each other in terms of environment and language. They often shared a common business tier and common data format. In the last 10 years, we have moved to a new model with the cloud native microservices in, in, and in this new world, services are developed by smaller focused teams with minimal dependency between them. So the new development process required a new mental model. In our mental model at Red Hat, we address microservices architecture from four aspects. So our first class citizen of the digital banking platform are APIs, events, data, and enterprise integration partners, part, pattern. So it's to handle the business logic that often requires multi-step processing uh, with halting and transformation across services, but it needs to deal with a clear and well-defined API contracts that are best approach for synchronous application level, kind of level interaction between services and with the outside world. Also events that represent something that happened in the business level and can broadly communicate across the distributor architecture and leverage the data as each Microsoft only saw data model and repository, there is there has to be a strategy for virtualizing that data in a manner that allows query and updates from other services and from outside world. Not everything you can take and run on cloud is cloud native. So at Red Hat, we use different strategies to help banks to transform in cloud native application and services environment that support these digital channels. So more than just a move to cloud uh, or container alone are not, are not, aren't enough and relying solely, solely in, on, on vendor specific cloud APIs make, make us only na native to the cloud so it's not just technology, it's about people process that need equal attention. And cloud native apps should expect and tolerate infrastructure failure, uh, expect infrastructure complexities to be abstract and composable and operate across a distributed architecture, availability zones and cloud providers. So being resilient, secure, observable and etc. So uh, approach to building and running applications that exploit this advantage of cloud computing to be cloud native solutions must be broken into functional blocks and run as microservices within containers on this elastic infrastructure using agile process and continuous delivery workflows. But most leading banks are planning and investing in composable architectures. And here, is, here we can see interesting patterns across the industry happening. Uh, the, 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 the interest of the first to be to, the interest at this first is the monolith. So with monolith, you have the reliable secure call stack of my function when my application calls that function. When you move from the monolith to the microservices, microservices uh, you are trading the real liability of the secure call stack for the reliability and secure network. And microservices are made of other microservices that depends on other microservices. It's always a evolution of the typical integration styles and architecture evolution. Now you have to deal with the service side 
to deal with the security, retries, the logging, tracing, halting. The client side has to deal with security, retries, logging, tracing, so many. This is not a new issue. So obviously with SOAP, you had to deal with this, but when you multiply the numbers of services by hundreds of microservices, you try to hand code this, it's, it doesn't scale. And with all these different services trying to connect them, uh, one approach will be, again, without the service mesh uh, capabilities on, on the platform and hand code some of the security authorization like WALF, add some overhead and managing virtual TLS, but then you start to get a nightmare of managing all the certificates and trying to keep all those fresh, which doesn't scale manually equally. So necessity is the mother of invention is a well-known proverb, the authors know. If on one side you have the monolith, in the other, you see the future that is approaching us, and it's impossible to predict the future. The future, but building a solid architecture based on principles is critical. Banks must be prepared to use fintech services, as well as make available APIs products to build experiences, new experiences for customers. Without this, the battlefield becomes more difficult. And they need to adapt more quickly to business needs to meet and exceed customer expectations. So looking at the journey of how applications have been designed and deployed can help us to understand why serverless has become a topic of discussion today. And in the move to the cloud native and the objective of being portable drives decisions, the smaller the code base, the more portable and scalable each process can become, the drive towards function as a services be the smallest and the light, lightest amount of code to shift. So this is a quick uh, definition for, for serverless that we are uh, using uh, at Red Hat in moving towards this future. And developers want to build microservices using the new application architectures that they run very efficiently in Kubernetes, a cloud native uh, platform. And Quarkus is an open source technology to develop cloud native runtimes, and it just became 2.0 recently. Quarkus was born to address this need of a Kubernetes, Kubernetes native runtime to develop new architectures for digital services and applications. And Quarkus is not targeting the monoliths. This is uh, great out. So it's really targeting microservices, serverless, and even driven architectures. So Red Hat is making a version of its Quarkus runtimes for deploying Java applications on Kubernetes that doesn't require a JVM. So it's one tenth of the memory for Quarkus versus the traditional Java runtime. And the startup is really crazy fast. So Quarkus becomes more relevant in Kubernetes, uh, functional as a services and serverless. And Java is now a real player in that space. So moving forward, um, what I want to bring is what Red Hat is doing in terms of this in, the, in that space of open APIs in financial services and also related to this architecture approach. So back in November at the API Days London in 2019, we presented another workshop for Red Hat Open Banking Sandbox. And beyond the common capabilities of the vanilla Kubernetes, it was aimed at prov providing a financial services open API sandbox as a toolkit developed by Red Hat to expedite the deployment of the previous architecture together with standard APIs. So we have shown these uh, through demos and also it's available uh, in a 
code repository publicly, and it provides a develop portal to quickly navigate through the catalog of available open APIs for external consumption, but also uh, using registered developer user uh, uh, the, the, uh, standard APIs. And you can try as a, as a developer to make calls without needing to, to, to do a coding. And, and so through this sandbox, you can try personal accounts APIs like, and that will respond with some mock data and also trying other client applications to use that APIs. And finally, uh, there is uh, also the, all the integration between the tooling, the API managed platforms and the cloud platform to deliver this solution. Uh, when it comes to APIs, many organizations are concerned only with the API manager, but entering the world of digital ecosystem takes much more than that. So it takes practice. So the architecture to secure the core banking APIs, and there is so many other uh, concerns and, and needs. So the entry point to the banking business capabilities are could be potentially a standard API partners, APIs or digital channels APIs. And the key components of this architecture are the infrastructure and development pipeline automation that ensures quality, security, and compliance. But also uh, we have two classes of banking modules that are deployed in this service mesh example through pipeline, pipeline automation. So the fit for proposed customer journey microservices that deliver the end user experiences through open APIs and the business capability microservices, which is a decomposition of the core banking in a cloud native architecture. The event streaming services uh, that allows to decouple the core banking legacy systems into that business capability integra integration layer and protecting and securing the cross concern uh, requirements using uh, this integrated with the platform. So this is a full spectrum of the API lifecycle that actually we support using Red Hat technologies and produce technology to. And no matter uh, what and where you choose to deploy, you have a, you have to have a consistent platform for, for the bank and the digital platform, digital banking platform. And the tools that to get the speed and productivity benefits, you, you can expect a modern cloud platform. So we are happy to talk in more details on the architecture and the technology that supports it. Uh, so when we hear about cloud native, we often think about cloud computing and innovation. And these, these innovations back it into every layer of OpenShift, the platform that for running hybrid cloud solutions. So we have a few more minutes uh, that we can use for Q and A, and I'll make this showing up this some references and links that could be useful for the for you uh, at this this session. Uh, great, thank you very much, Raphael. Uh, really interesting. Uh, Folks, please do forward through your questions in the Q&A section. I, I do have one for you, Raphael. Um, so for incumbent banks, you're more likely um, to have uh, brown fields rather than uh, green fields. So how do you develop and adopt a cloud native approach in open APIs in these situations? Right, so the move towards open finance and consumer data sharing is the market force. And we must recognize this. So th this push is a new wave as we have, we have had many others in financial services. So we had the time of electronic channels and ATMs, a service were improved with the self services, but still had to go to the branch and check the account balance and get a statement. The scale at this was not significant, but the capillarity of the banking network had to increase. Then we had the era of digitization with internet banking and mobile banking, consumers could check their balance numerous times on their payday or also make payments and transactions online. So preparing for this is in, in these days of omnichannel and digital ecosystems with open finance is 
we need to speed up and volume and growth that is growing exponentially. And situation needs are preparing for it. So technology is not enough. It needs, it takes organization of the business and the architecture that supports this operation. So Red Hat is working with leading banks, institutions to deliver a solid digital platform architecture and bringing technologies that mainly help in the coping of the systems for a greater flexibility that the integrations of digital services require. So, and supporting our customers and partner in operating a hybrid cloud architecture and environment. Okay, great. Thanks, Rafael. All right, Re awesome. really, really interesting topic at the moment. Moment, um, I can I can see that there's a lot of work going on in in the uh, in the open banking space. So um, interesting. Okay, uh, and nice. I'm yeah yeah, not seeing. Um, just waiting to see those other questions filter through. Yeah, so I think that's um, in the, yeah, it's still the same same topic. The the this as we go through these new waves and the new services and and adding many other layers in the previous waves of software and infrastructures that had to be built. So prioritizing this coexisting of heterogeneous environments, uh, so the legacy and the new have been the the approach that uh, companies and institutions were taking before. But uh, what we see now, thanks concerns more about uh, that is not enough to create a new layer and then okay. starting to create their uh, footprint on in the cloud that support the new kind of relationships and interactions provide new experience to customers and and this is, has been what uh, uh, some fundamental work that that involves the, the the operation of api products in this in these ecosystems okay great so uh you in this in this in this slide so there are it, it there is a, a a link to the to the to the collaborative workspace of the open api sandbox but there's also interactive learning portal that anyone can have can can access and and play with some of these technologies that we have been showing here and also be able to try put your hands on and try to using developer sandbox for OpenShift or even even driven architecture environment with the Tri Kafka. So and also invite everyone to 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 find out more about Red Hat and new financial services using this uh, the, the former link uh, at the bottom. Fantastic. That's a, a great set of resources there, Raphael. I really appreciate that. And and thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, I, I do hope your soccer team does well tonight. <laughs> and, uh... <I> <laughs> thank you so much, Rebecca. And thank you, everyone, for taking your time. All right.